Tonight is the go-home raw for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view and Elon Musk has got a massive announcement for the pay-per-view to kick off tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video. And today guys, we've got episode number 4 of the McMahonless Universe, my Total Extreme Wrestling 2016 series. And before we crack on with tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw, uh, I've got a couple of apologies I need to make. First up, I'm sorry that there's been no video for the last episode of Smackdown. I recorded it, I thought everything was alright, but when it came out after rendering, the video was just awful, and it was it was cut down to like three minutes. Not really too sure what happened, so I'm sorry about that. So instead what I'm going to do, is I'm going to do a recap of that episode of Smackdown on tomorrow's episode, because I think it makes more sense to do a Smackdown recap on a Smackdown episode. And yet also, sorry about the lack of videos at all last week. I got caught up at, at important bits in my FM19 stream series over on Twitch. So I kind of had to do a couple of extra streams which bit into my uh, uploading time. So I'm sorry about that. But with all that said and done, that's more than enough rambling done by me. Let's go and crack on with tonight's show. The first segment of the show sees Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins in the ring trading insults. Brock Lesnar says that if Seth Rollins even makes it to WrestleMania, it will be the biggest embarrassment of Seth Rollins' career because that will be the last anybody ever sees of Seth Rollins. But then Elon Musk comes out and Elon Musk tells Brock Lesnar... He shouldn't be worried about Seth Rollins making it to WrestleMania. He should be worried about himself making it. Because for the first time ever, Brock Lesnar will defend his Universal title inside the Elimination Chamber this Sunday. And the first qualifying match starts right now. And this segment gets us a B+. Plus which I'm very happy with. Paul Heyman obviously helped Lesnar during the segment. Uh, Seth, Rollins, Seth Rollins did a masterful job of improvising interactions with the crowd, and the angle got the show off to a strong start, and it got the crowd hotter. So let's go and find out what that first match in qualifying for the Eliminating Chamber is. It's Bobby Lashley versus Kurt Angle. And in a match which gets us a C-plus rating, it's Kurt Angle getting maybe a little bit of a surprise victory over Bobby Lashley. When he makes Bobby Lashley tap out when he gets the ankle lock on him after Finn Balor distracted Bobby Lashley. And so, yeah, Kurt Angle is the first entrant qualified into the Elimination Chamber for the Universal title. Bobby Lashley had an in-ring performance of C-. Kurt Angle got a C+. And the Balor versus Lashley storyline has advanced with this segment and gained a little bit of heat. Next up is Tyler Breeze backstage following his victory last week to earn himself a Cruiserweight title match. He's just cutting a promo on Buddy Murphy and he's saying how this Sunday at the Elimination Chamber... The Cruiserweight title will have a brand new beginning and the Cruiserweight title will be fabulous. Next up is the second match in qualifying for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. And in a C-rated match, Elias gets the win over Bobby Roode with another submission of Boston Crab after Chad Gable tried to go after Elias but instead he got Bobby Roode. Which, let, which allowed Elias to hook in that Boston Crab. And Elias got a C-, minus, as did Bobby Roode. And a storyline between Roode and Gable has now started after this segment. 
And so, yep, that is half the field of the Elimination Chamber already set. Brock Lesnar defending his title. Kurt Angle as the first man qualified. And Elias as the second man qualified. And so, let's go move on. Next up is the Bosch and Hug Connection. Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. And the rating is a C-. minus. Little tiny bit disappointed with that. The Bosch and Hug getting the win in 8 minutes 42 when Bailey pinned Mickey James by pinfall with a Bailey to Belly suplex. Suplex? Suplex? What well, no, else? Suplex. Bailey had an in ring performance of D. Sasha Banks got a C minus. Mickey James got a D plus. That's disappointing. And Alexa Bliss got a C. And the women's tag division storyline has advanced with the segment and gained some heat. Following that up, we've got yet another Elimination Chamber qualifying match in a bout that had decent wrestling but didn't have much, much heat. Drew McIntyre defeated Apollo Crews in 10 minutes 20 by pinfall with the Scott drop. The match rating is a C-. minus. Little tiny bit disappointed with that one as well. Maybe thought could have got a little bit better out of these two. But Apollo Crews and Titus O'Neil have excellent chemistry together. Titus O'Neil is still, of course, Apollo Crews' manager. And Apollo Crews got an in-ring performance of D+. Drew McIntyre got a C. And so that's Drew McIntyre now qualified for the Elimination Chamber match. Next up is Ronda Rousey in an extremely short match. In 2 minutes 48, she defeats Elisa Fox by submission with the armbar. Another C- minus match, but it was very, very short. Hopefully that won't affect the show rating too much. Says here, Elisa Fox is not suited to a gimmick. Wanda Rousey had an in-ring performance of B-, minus, and Elisa Fox got a D. And so that's why we had Elisa Fox get beat rather quickly, because she's rubbish, basically. And next up, after that, Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch are having a heated confrontation. But before they can get to each other, before they can hurt each other too much, security swarms the ring to break them up. And this gets a B-plus rating for this segment, which is phenomenal to see. I'm very happy with that. The segment apparently deserved better announcing... But the angle got the crowd hotter and Rousey versus Lynch storyline has gained heat. So all positive. And next up, The Revival versus Kalisto and Lince Dorado. In a, mount, in a bout that had subpar wrestling and little heat, The Revival defeated Kalisto and Lince Dorado in 12 minutes 19 when Das Wilder defeated Lince Dorado by pinfall with the Saturn machine. Match rating is a C-. minus. Can't really expect too much more out of that. And Lince Dorado was apparently the weak link. And Kalisto had an in-ring performance of D+. Lince Dorado got an E. Jesus Christ. C- minus for Scott Dawson. And same for Das Wilder. And then, as the revival, are leaving the ring. Uh, Kalisto and Lince Dorado are getting back up. When they get attacked by Pete Dunne, Zack Sabre Jr. and William Ospreay. As they attack them, making their debut in the WWE. The rating is a D-. And Pete Dunne has debuted his badass gimmick. That's got an initial rating of a below average. That's disappointing. Zack Sabre Jr. has debuted his future gimmick. And that's got an initial rating of above average. And Will Ospreay has debuted his thrill seeker gimmick. Which again has got above average. The announcing quality lifted the segment. And the colour commentary gave the segment a boost. Unfortunately this angle cooled the crowd a little bit. Little bit disappointing, but they, there it is. The debut of Pete Dunne, Zack Sabre Jr. and Will Ospreay in the WWE. And this is where I need your guys' help. I've got bloody no idea for a stable name for these three British gentlemen. So if some of you guys in the comments below 
could maybe help me out. And if you do give me the name I like for this stable, then I'll give you a shout out on the video next week. And next up, one more qualifying match for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. And it's Braun Strowman defeating Baron Corbin in a C-plus rated match in 9 minutes 26. And not a whole lot to say about this match. It's Braun Strowman versus Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin sucks, in my opinion. So that is why Braun Strowman got the win in this one. Braun Strowman with the B-minus rating. And Baron Corbin with the C-minus. So the right guy won the match. And that is one more person into the elimination chamber. Paul Heyman is now backstage with Elon Musk. And he's complaining and moaning and whining. You know how Paul Heyman does. There's nobody better in the business at moaning and whining than Paul Heyman, IMO. And yet he's saying, how could you put Brock Lesnar into the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view? He's your, he's your biggest box office draw. How could you do this? You are threatening the very existence of WrestleMania this year. But Elon Musk comes back to him. And Elon Musk goes, if Brock Lesnar really is the beast, surely he'll be even bigger box office if he can keep hold of the Universal title at the Elimination Chamber. And he is not changing his mind. So Paul Heyman needs to leave immediately. And so the segment gets us a C+. Paul Heyman, as ever, was good. Elon Musk still looking quite poor. But again, hopefully, over time, he will improve. As next up is our only one-on-one -on -one match tonight, I believe. That's not in qualifying for the Universal title match at the at the pay-per-view. It's Seth Rollins versus Razor. Seth Rollins asked for this match because Razor is a little bit the same size, the same shape as Brock Lesnar. So Seth Rollins wants to show that he can deal with bigger, stronger, tougher men. And indeed he does. In a C-plus rated match, Seth Rollins getting the win by pinfall with a pedigree over Razor. And yes, yeah, Seth Rollins son in this match apparently. Because Seth Rollins had an in-ring performance of B-plus, but Razor E-plus. Jesus Christ again. Even, even I wouldn't do that bad, I don't think. Wow. And next up is the last match in qualifying for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. It's Dean Ambrose versus Finn Balor. And in a match that goes 16 minutes 42, Dean Ambrose gets the win after Bobby Lashley interferes and attacks Finn Balor as a little bit of revenge for what Finn Balor did earlier tonight. So Dean Ambrose is in the Elimination Chamber match. Finn Balor not suited to his gimmick apparently. This match got the crowd hotter. Dean Ambrose had an in-ring performance of B- as did Finn Balor. And the Balor versus Lashley storyline has gained heat. And then backstage, Dean Ambrose is just walking backstage after his match where he bumps into Kurt Angle. And Dean Ambrose is saying, Huh, me and you two in the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, eh? Maybe I might have to make it my business to eliminate you first, seeing as how you screwed me in my match versus Seth Rollins. And so the segment gets us a C+. Kurt Angle getting better at his gimmick. And the Ambrose versus Angle storyline has advanced with the segment. And now it's time for the main event of the evening. It's Seth Rollins and John Cena versus Nakamura and Dolph Ziggler. Seth Rollins in his second match of the night. John Cena needed a tag team partner to take on Nakamura and Dolph Ziggler. And Seth Rollins comes out and helps him out. And it's a B-rated match. John Cena and Seth Rollins... Getting the win over Nakamura and Dolph Ziggler in 17 minutes 53. When Seth Rollins defeated Ziggler by pinfall with another pedigree. Two pedigrees, two wins in one night for Seth Rollins. 
Dolph Ziggler was the weak link, apparently, struggling to keep up with everybody else. This match got the crowd buzzing. Seth Rollins had an in-ring performance of B+. John Cena got a B. Ziggler had a C. And Nakamura got a B. So Dolph Ziggler, a little bit behind everyone else, but not a whole lot. And the Nakamura versus Cena storyline has advanced with this segment. Following this, Brock Lesnar comes back out and he and Paul Heyman are moaning and complaining still about Lesnar being put in the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. And this eventually brings out Kurt Angle, Dean Ambrose, Elias, McIntyre and Strowman. And they all kind of get the beast cornered in the middle of the ring. And then they all start launching fists and kicks. And they all beat down Brock Lesnar to end the show with a B-rated segment. Strowman not suited to his gimmick. Lesnar and Heyman obviously have good chemistry. Nigel McGuinness was pretty weak at the announce table. And the segment deserved better announcing. The segment deserved better colour commentary. Uh, but the performance of Lesnar was good. The Strowman versus McIntyre storyline has advanced and gained heat. And the Ambrose versus Angle storyline has also gained heat. So let's go. Let's see what kind of rating we have got for the show. And it's a B. I will take that. I will take that all day long. I'm very, very happy with that rating. The show increased our popularity in 26 regions. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. Let me know in the comments section down below. Who do you think is going to win the Elimination Chamber match at the pay-per-view? Is it going to be Brock Lesnar retaining his Universal title? Will Kurt Angle get one last run with a main level championship? Will WWE eventually stand for walk with Elias? Will Drew McIntyre become not only the Scottish psychopath, but the Scottish Universal Champion? Will Braun Strowman finally become the monster among champions? Or will Dean Ambrose become the lunatic world champion? So let me know down below who you think is going to win that match. And yep, guys, that's all we got time for today. I'll be back tomorrow with SmackDown Live. And if you haven't already, please do drop a massive thumbs up on the channel down below. And if you haven't as well, please do subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And also follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash badjokesgames. And if you like, if, if you like FM19, please, please, please do consider dropping me a follow over on twitch.tv slash badjokesgames. And so, yep, I think that's just about everything. I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye.